Lobbers and wreckers, this is internet personality Vangelis, and the latest chapter of Generations is here to finally look at multiple generations of Transformers, doubling up words with the title of Legacy because Generations isn't enough to be a catch-all anymore. And we're starting off with Voyager Bulkhead from the Prime Universe, provided for coverage by Hasbro of Hassenfeld Brothers fame. We're also taking a quick look at the delicious purple palette of the Legacy packaging, which is a real highlight of two be recycled joy with its neon bombasticarity and explosive artwork that sure would look good on a TCG trading card game gaming card. Uh, there's also no window and very little, if any, plastic involved in the packing side of things at all, debuting a new chapter of green-friendly Hasbro activity as long as you ignore uh, the Walmart Legacy Deluxes. Can't help but film all this deliciously ace-tastic purple just everywhere! Bulkhead from Transformers Prime, who was an evergreen-tinged reimagining of Bulkhead from Transformers Animated, has been evergreen reimagined into a G1 flavor as he enters the legacy dimension, and uh, it means he has a nose. I didn't see it at first, but once it was pointed out to me, it began an emotional trilogy that I'll hopefully expand upon over time. Anyway, he's also been unrounded and emblockened with a brick-like silhouette that does look a lot less awkward in person, to go back to a familiar refrain. Really, the main issue for me is that his torso has a lot of translucent windshields, which reveal a whole lot of nothing inside his chest, giving him a far more hollow look than he actually has in dynamic photography. And the head sculpt honestly achieves a buttering of my bulky bread, nose or not, since that nose is so buried within an underbite that I, like I said, I didn't see it until someone told me about it. Did I mention the nose stuff yet? I, I can't remember. Anyway, Legacy Bulkhead includes a gun and a ball. The ball wrecks and can peel open to reseal around either of his fists, while the gun can mount on a cool shoulder position with a tiny peg. It's like a cross between, like, Bulkhead and, and Hound. And I'm, I'm inviting commenters to feel clever. Uh, but hey, if you prefer to see your robot guns in robot grips, it's also got a 5mm peg handle, and that wrecking ball has all sorts of 5mm ports so you can plug the gun onto the ball too! And if you don't want to use either weapon and don't know what Ziploc bags are, you can store them on the plate hanging off of Bulkhead's back, or on any of the myriad 5mm ports adorning the Green Lad's body. And if you don't like the plate hanging off of Bulkhead's back full stop, don't worry! You can pull it off to use as a riot shield complete with a wee little peeking hole, but the truly courageous among us will fold it around Bulkhead's arm to provide him with a lug nut tier everything killing Omega Punch, which honestly feels like its actual primary function from the geometry to the hinges to the sculpted surfaces. This thing is a pile driving column made to fist the floor. One other little thing that won me over on Bulkhead's legacy head uh, is that the range on the ball joint is actually, is actually kind of pretty dang good. It's a motive. He can glance up and down a touch, uh, which is very valuable when you've got this much uh, seating around your head uh, when you're a robot like this. The arms uh, are very basic, though, and unhindered. They can do the things they got to do. The elbows thanks to the transformation, can curl in past 90 degrees, which, again, opens up the range a bit. And then, hey, wrist swivel! We can go from just, I'm a robot toy, to, I want power. The waist uh, is also a basic swivel, and I've left all his stuff on, by the way, just to demonstrate that it doesn't really get in the way of anything. Like, there's there's enough clearance down here to, to spin around and punch some people. Also, that uh, wrist swivel works when you have the Wrecking Ball on, which does move these 5 mil port ports around, so you can reposition them from top side to side to side, however you need. The hips are basic and functional. Uh, they can do some big-ass uh, high-kicking uh, to clip all those birds that fly over top of robots in uh, languid and peaceful uh, paintings and photography. There is a thigh swivel inside the big thigh, which means it's not like a full cut like the bicep, but it does enough, I think, and has some some aesthetic. Uh, the knees bend a simple 90. They don't have like a funny thing like the elbows. They're just simple. The feet, though, aside from an ankle tilt, as we all you know, know and love with a big like, whoa, where's my ligaments? The feet can actually tilt forward a little bit and backward a little bit without that just being a function of a fold-out heel. So you can still do the fold-out heel stuff to help with your balance, but also, I think this is really key that the foot can come forward just a bit so you can get the legs to be back 
just a bit and get a little bit of that hero stance going on which on this shape of body I think does wonders so articulation wise bulkhead in legacy is pretty dang good and the articulation also really helps him have that 06 classics Rodimus thing of looking and feeling way better in hand than in still product photography, especially before anyone's gotten to handle one. There are some very cool tricks going on with Legacy Bulkhead's transformation, and I am a big fan of how it very clearly works from the top down, front to back, upper body becomes the front of the truck, and then the legs become the rear. But in doing all of that, the upper body is also persnickety. There's a very specific order of operations, and something about the figure invites a more haphazard groping that can leave arm hinges colliding with a little double-wheel backpack hump in a dangerous web of tension. Basically, do it right and don't rush. On the bright side, as I said, it's very linear and everything has got a place to go, with guidance tabs aplenty slotting into place all along the way. The weapons even have a little nook to chill out in, though much like the upper body conversion, their placement demands a bit of unexpected specificity. Overall, an enjoyable process, but one that requires a touch of practice and care. And here we have it! A big green rectangle truck! Where are all my clever comment folk? Why is nobody hounding me to be more specific? Regardless, I like this alt mode, as cinematic and optimus-inducing as its shapes may be. I mean, here. If you remove all the accessory bits, you get the silhouette that inspired at least one whole week of bulkhead is an Optimus pre-tool conversation. Regardless, it fits the bill of, quote, stonkin' truck, unquote. Also, the clear windshields reap their benefits here in showing kinda nothing. My feelings on these things have certainly become more nuanced in the past decade. At least the wheels are happy to roll like a toy trucks should. By the way, there are various ways to stick 5mm peggables into Bulkhead's truck mode, but the secret sauce? The undiscovered country? It's in the 5mm ported axles of his wheels. They are ports that spin! Legacy Voyager Bulkhead went from milk toast reveal to teeth gnashing discussion point to perfectly alright Transformers toy robot in the briefness of his lifespan thus far. Representing a middle ground of the Prime Universe crew in Legacy thus far, his head sculpt hits its iconic notes in spite of a nubby little nose while his body ranges from adequate to oddity depending on your viewing angle. I dig him, I thought there'd be a retool or redeco by now, and all we got as of this recording is bespattered bulkhead from the Amazon Wreckers capsule. I tilt my head and touch my chin, read that as you will. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Vangelis, and universes abound in this legacy adventure. Thank you all for joining me on another romp, and big bad bulky extra gratitudes to all my direct supporters via Patreon, Coffee, YouTube membership, and etc. I would not lob you very far, instead I would lob you a f with platonic affection